Greetings, I'm the dentist. Welcome back to Dent Agenda. This is Chapter 4, Orthodontics. These are the points we're going to discuss in this tutorial. Starting with getting to know what is orthodontics. It is the branch of dentistry concerned with the growth of the face, development of dentition, prevention and correction of occlusal anomalies. Ortho is a Greek word and it means straight. Also keep in mind that malocclusion is not a disease, it is just a variation from ideal occlusion. Malocclusions, according to angles, are classified into three classes, and some have subdivisions. We are going to touch upon that in details at the end of the presentation, but for now, know the prevalence of each one. 60% class 1 20% class 2 division 1 10-18% to class 2 division 2 and 5% class 3 Have you ever wondered why would some people need orthodontic treatment? Well, the main indications for orthodontic treatment are either aesthetics or functional. Aesthetic reasons would greatly vary from one person to another. Functional reasons, however, may include the following. Correction of skeletal and dental malocclusions. Deep traumatic overbite. Open bite. Increased overjet, especially if the lips are incompetent, where there is increased risk of trauma. Labial crowding of lower incisors, as this reduces the periodontal support labially. Decrease the risk in extraction in close proximity to nerves like in wisdom teeth. Solve breathing problems. Solve TMJ problems. Also, in adults, Treatment may be indicated to facilitate restorative management. Orthodontic treatment may come with some risks, as the following. Toothache and mild discomfort. Scratches and ulcers in the surrounding soft tissues. Even with good oral hygiene measures, a small loss of periodontal attachment is common. And with poor oral hygiene, this will be increased indeed. Gum infection. Decalcification of enamel. It will occur if there are frequent sugar intakes between meals. Around 1 to 2 mm root resorption is associated with fixed appliance treatment. And in at risk patients, those with shortened or blunt root shapes, this risk may increase. Also, tooth vitality might be affected. Therefore, the potential benefits of orthodontic treatment must be sufficient to counterbalance these risks. Who should do orthodontic treatment? As a matter of fact, all dentists should be concerned with growth and development. Unless anomalies are detected early and any necessary steps taken at the appropriate time, then provision of the best possible outcome for the patient is less likely. 
but most orthodontic treatments are now carried out by trained specialist orthodontic practitioners, which is best. When should we do orthodontic treatment? Well, most orthodontic treatments are not started until the early secondary dentition, when the canines and premolars have erupted. At this stage, the response to orthodontic forces is more rapid, appliances are better tolerated, and most importantly, growth can be utilized to help affect sagittal or vertical changes. However, there is some evidence that protraction face mask therapy for class 3 malclusion achieves more skeletal change around the age of 8 to 9 years than in older children. In adults, lack of growth, increased risk of periodontal disease, worn, damaged and missing teeth and also slower tooth movement will limit the time of malocclusion that can be managed by orthodontics alone. What to refer and when? Cases of cleft lip and palate and other craniofacial anomalies should be referred to an orthodontist in the primary dentition or even before. Now to the conditions that should be referred to an orthodontist during the early mixed dentition. Delayed eruption of permanent incisors. Impaction or failure of eruption of the first molars. Molars of poor long term prognosis. Severe class 3 skeletal problems. Anterior cross bites. Ectopic maxillary canines. Patients with medical problems or pathology in the jaws. Last but not least, Growth modifications of skeletal plus 2 malocclusions, hypodontia, and most routine problems should be referred to an orthodontist during the late mixed dentition. Now let's get to know some common definitions in the field of orthodontics. Ideal occlusion, anatomically perfect arrangement of teeth which is rare to occur. Normal occlusion, acceptable variation from ideal occlusion. Competent lips. Lips meet with minimal or no muscle activity, so the lips are sealed with the muscles relaxed. Incompetent lips. Anatomically short lips, which do not contact when musculature is relaxed. Lip seal is achieved only by active contraction of the orbicularis oris and mentalis muscles. Potentially competent lips. Lip seal is prevented due to the protrusion of maxillary incisors despite normally developed lips. Everted lips. These are hypertrophied lips with redundant tissue but weak muscular tonicity. Class 1. The lower incisor edge occlude with or lie immediately below the cingulum of upper incisors. Class 2. The lower incisor edge lie posterior to the cingulum of the upper incisors and it has two divisions. Class 2 Division 1, where the upper central incisors are upright or proclined and the overjet is increased. Class 2 Division 2, the upper central incisors are retroclined and the overjet is usually decreased but may be increased as well. Class 3, the lower incisor edge lie anterior to the cingulum of the upper incisors and the overjet decreased or reversed.
This diagram shows the relation between the maxilla and the mandible in the different classes. In class one, the maxilla is slightly protruded than the mandible, which is normal. In class two, it could be that the maxilla is severely advanced to the mandible, or the mandible is severely retruded than the maxilla, or a combination of both. In class three, it could be that the maxilla is severely retruded than the mandible, or the mandible is severely advanced to the maxilla or a combination of both. These illustrations show the molar and canine relationship between upper and lower arches in different classes. Starting with the molar relation, we are talking about the first permanent molar. In class one, you will find that the mesobuccal cusp of the upper six occludes with the anterior buccal groove of the lower six. In class two, the mesobuccal cusp will be more mesial than that, and in class three, the mesobuccal cusp will be in a more distal position. Moving to the canine position. In class one, the cusp of the upper canine will occlude between the lower canine and first premolar. In class two, it will be more mesial than that, so it will be mesial to the lower canine. And in class three, the upper canine cusp will be distal to the lower canine. Here you can point the different inclination of the upper incisors between the two divisions of class two. In class two division one, the upper incisors are severely proclined and the overjet is increased. And in class two division two, the upper incisors are upright or even retroclined, and the overjet is decreased. Bimaxillary proclination. It means that both upper and lower incisors are proclined more than normal. Difference between overjet and overwhite. Overjet is the distance between upper and lower incisors in the horizontal plane. Overbite is the overlap of the incisors in the vertical plane. Overbite could be either complete overbite or deep bite, means that the lower incisors contact the upper incisors or the palatal mucosa more than normal. Or incomplete overbite, which is open bite, meaning that the lower incisors do not contact the upper incisors or the palatal mucosa at all, and it gives the open bite. Here you can see the ideal overjet and overbite. Here you can see the anterior open bite. There is no vertical overlap of the incisors when the buccal segment of the teeth are in occlusion. And here is the anterior cross bite or reversed overjet, meaning that the lower incisors are in front of the upper incisors, like in class 3. Here it is an increased overjet, and here is an increased overbite or complete deep bite. And this is an edge to edge relation. Cross bite is a deviation from the normal buccolingual relationship. It might be anterior, as shown before, or posterior, uni or bilateral. Here we're going to demonstrate the posterior cross bite. Buccal cross bite means that the buccal cusps of lower premolars and molars occlude buccally to the buccal cusps of the upper premolars or molars. Lingual cross bite means that the buccal cusps of lower molars occlude lingually to the lingual cusps of the upper molars. Dentoalveolar compensation or in other words, camouflage. The inclination of the teeth compensate for the underlying skeletal pattern. 
so that the occlusal relationship between the arches is less severe. For example, in class 2, the skeletal problem is that the maxilla is more protruded or the mandible is more retruded. The teeth will compensate for that appearance by this. The upper incisors will start to be upright or retroclined, and the lower incisors will be proclined. If we apply it on class 3, in which the skeletal pattern is the maxilla is retruded and the mandible is protruded, or both, you will find that the upper incisors will start being proclined and the lower incisors will be upright or retroclined. Leeway space. It is the difference in the total width between C, D, E and 3, 4 and 5. The total width of C, D and E is greater than that of the total width of 3, 4 and 5. That's why after the eruption of the permanent canine and premolars, a space is created between the 5 and the 6. This space closes spontaneously due to the mesial shift of permanent molars. Note that the leeway space is greater in the lower than the upper arch. In the maxilla, it is 0.9 mm per quadrant, means that a total of 1.8 mm in the upper arch. In the mandible, it is 1.7 mm per quadrant, means that the total of 3.4 mm in the lower arch. And here we have covered all the points for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.